Okay, so welcome everyone to our study abroad podcast series. So today we have Navid, who did his masters from Virginia Tech, and now he is working with Shlambarje, and he is from IIT Rurki, and we'll be talking about his journey from IIT to Virginia Tech and whatever happened in between. So welcome, Navid. Thank you, Vishal. So Navid, uh, the very first question I'll have for you is. when was the very first time you thought that you know something like outside india is something you would like to explore for short or long term degree or something like that so uh when i was doing my undergrad at uh, rookie uh, i had a chance to do a internship here in us so uh during the summer internship i had a great experience in research lab and uh, i realized that learning in united states is a different experience than back in india and uh, i was trying to align that with my future goals so i had this uh, thought initially in my mind when i came for the internship but then i after graduation from rurki i got a job so i never gave it a serious thought after that but then uh during my job uh i felt monotonic life so i decided to give it another thought and that's when i decided i'll do a master so this uh, monotonous thought i think comes to lot of people uh, when was your first monotonous thought kicked in so uh, i think uh, my first uh, was just uh, after a couple of months into the corporate so when we are into the college we like we have this perception of a uh, job life in our head some people like to for example uh, solve problems some people like to for example have a relaxed job i was looking for something in between so i could not find that uh, excitement in the work so i started to explore what should i do even though i knew that when i went to internship before during my undergrad at us i liked it but i was not sure that i want to pursue the same field so that's why i started to do some exploration to reinvent what could interest me and i think like after one year or so i started to like realize or settle what is it that probably would interest me so i think sometime around maybe around a year it was more of a consolidated thought so you mentioned you did some internship while you were doing your undergrad right uh, yeah. where did you go for the internships so i did my internship at uh, colorado school of mines yeah, during summer and uh, it was a research internship in uh, petrophysics which was the uh, aligned with my undergrad degree at iit roorkee so uh, this was the only internship you did in your last uh, in your undergrad life or you did few more here and there so i had multiple internship uh, experience so i have interned with uh, oil and national gas corporation of ngc in india and i had research internship at uh, like iit rurki itself there was a dean summer undergraduate research award to facilitate and undergrad research at rurki so i was i have been doing that internship as well and then uh, i this was my you can say third or fourth internship officially so so this was the only one abroad uh, the csm the colorado school of mines one yes this was the only one outside india and because of this you would have already got a 10 year us visa right uh so i think my case was a bit different we applied to b2 so it was a j1 visa yeah so the j1 visa is always given during the tenure of your research uh timeline okay okay so you applied only b2 not the b1 b2 otherwise you not have... b2 it was j1 okay okay sure sure yeah so uh once you had this colorado school of mines experience uh, that motivated you a bit that okay maybe some day you should try this and then you got your job and you probably went into your comfort zone at the very beginning but after some months or so you decided that okay you know maybe it was not a correct thing or uh, there is something missing in my life i need maybe more challenges this that uh, 
yeah, uh, and that's somewhere. where you decided <laughs> to go yeah. for your masters right okay and yeah. that time was also covid time i think 2020 and also you deferred your uh, masters because of the covid time also uh, no you're right i didn't have to defer so it was indeed a covid time but so i knew that i want to change but uh, so if you see my undergrad was in geophysics whereas i did my masters in computer science so i did not know that if i want to do masters in computer science because i had no idea what computer science field is about my i was all my internships in undergrad was in geophysics and my work at schlumberger was also in geophysics so i had not explored computer science in depth uh, even though i was like familiar with a uh, fundamental programming which everyone do in their undergrad but i was I haven't explored that field in the depth so i did not know what subject or what area Uh, do i need to take so i was for, after realizing that i would perhaps want to uh, increase my knowledge or want to like specialize or do another master degree i had to first explore what is the degree that i want to essentially choose so that i can know that this definitely interests me and working in that field is something that i'm looking forward to for my life so i started to sca- like look f- different field for example from analytics from data science from business uh, even for product and then i also looked into some government services so like upsc and uh, i was speaking to my friends my seniors to understand their journey who has taken different path and who comes from similar background and have i was telling about my uh, confusion with my current job and then i decided after talking to them after trying different things left and right i thought maybe i want to pursue masters in computer science that was just of an intuition when i decided so when i decided it i had to start committing to the field so it was a gradual process so i think i applied for my masters during fall 2020 so i did not have to defer my uh, admission to answer your question it was fall 21 which i was planning to uh, start my program so in iit also like after one or two semesters you have a chance of department change did you try that during your undergrad also or nothing like that that time no i did not try that because i was uh, i'm happy i was happy with my uh, geophysics course at iit and it is because uh, i was mainly interested in uh, computational science and geophysics was encompassing a big part of that however the role at corporate is different so while during my undergrad i was doing research internships so my research internships was having the element of computational geophysics which i was thoroughly enjoying and that's why i never felt uh, that i have to like look into some other field in fact maths and physics has been my interest uh, so i was happy with geophysics and i still like ge- reading about geophysics it's just i think uh, uh, what element or what part of that field you are interested in exploring sure, sure. so when you are applying to virginia tech you would have probably applied to few more colleges so how many roughly yes. you applied to and were were they all in cs only uh no so because my case was a bit different i think uh, i didn't know that if i will get a admission in computer science because uh, i had no uh, for example let's say L- course work background or no solid experience working in the core of computer science so when i was doing my research i started to like email some university in europe us asking about the eligibility if i come from a geophysics background so i found that some of the universities in europe for example they need a strict eligibility requirement for you to even submit an application then i realized that uh, us is perhaps a different case so in united states even though i'm eligible the competition is huge and uh, it may not be easy to like get a computer science program so i will i applied for three field computer science data science and computational science so i applied for these three but uh, 
I was certain that if I get computer science, I will pick that. So three courses, uh, three specialization, and how many colleges? I think I roughly applied to seven or eight. So out of which I was able to get admission from four or five. So, but I wanted to do computer science, so that's why I chose Virginia Tech. So Virginia Tech was like the obvious choice out of all the admits that you received. Yes, Virginia Tech was a very good choice for me because uh, uh, I wanted to uh, do something related to research in computer science, thesis based. I had some thought for that and other offerings were related to just coursework only. That's why Virginia Tech was a uh, like obvious choice. Did you also receive or got an offer of RATA, like fellowship, scholarship, anything like that? Yes, yes. So during my master thesis at Virginia Tech, I was supported by RA and TA. So it was like a full support, like tuition fee and RA TA all combined. You were on your feet completely. Yes, it was complete support. Uh, with tuition fee and uh, extra stipend to cover your expenses. Sure, sure. So that was also a driving factor for you to choose Virginia Tech there. Okay, fine. Here, yeah. you know, I'm on my feet and I don't have to like put in my own money. So, no, it was not like that. Initially, I was not offered any scholarship when I had an admission letter. But uh, I knew, I heard from about that Virginia Tech has a good so research program. Particularly, uh, I had a primarily geophysics experience. And I was going into computer science, so I wanted. I was looking into uh, the professors or researchers or faculties at universities who have a common intersect with me. For example, in computer science field as well, many faculties do research in language, in natural sciences. So I was looking into the intersection where I can talk to a faculty and uh, discuss about my aspiration of continuing uh, research, but more from the computer science aspect, uh, but in the but in the geosciences. So I found faculty was some faculty had here experiences in research in geosciences, not in geophysics, but in geosciences, which is a bit different because they were doing more of a, a climate problem or lake temperature modeling problem. So those were the field that I know I was familiar with. So that was a good uh, common intersect. And I feel that if I want to like pursue any research, I would need something to be common. I, it will be difficult to like pick a completely new domain and apply computer science. If I have some domain understanding, then uh, perhaps uh, uh, understanding com concepts of computer science would per uh, relatively be easier. So after you reached Virginia Tech with say, no, no scholarship, you actually found professors or uh, here and there research labs to find some RATA thing to cover all your expense. But usually this is from the second semester then, right? Or did you get it in the from the first semester only? No, it was from second semester. So during my first semester, I was taking courses and uh, I, was, I, I was basically covering the fundamentals of the field. I, like I said, I didn't have any fundamental so I was taking the fundamental courses and then uh, I was talking to the professor expressing my interest and then uh, from the second semester I happened to like start my research work. So in your visa application you had to pretty much show the finances that you can support yourself completely because you cannot say that you know I'll go there and I'll find a like a TA. No, I had, yeah you know, that, that, you are right I had the financial uh, backup with me and uh, when I was starting to work with my research RATA was not like uh, I would say my uh, primary motivation because even though RATA is a big part and big financial support for your uh, uh, master's education let's say uh, I, for me the distinguishing factor for research was because I did not have any work or you can say solid project in computer science and uh, that actually weakens my profile to get interviews. 
or to apply for different jobs or different opportunities, be it internship or be it full-time roles. So my primary motivation was to basically dive into the core of computer science, do a long-term project because long-term projects help you develop foundation in the field. And uh, that's why I was uh, uh, preferring to do research and thesis, which is oppose, opposite to the trend usually which students take in their master's journey, I would say. And RETA just happened to be, uh, you can say, chance that if the professor is liking the progress and of your work, they might be willing to support you. So at least, uh, it's not necessary that if you are doing thesis, you will be supported financially. So you would have to like so good amount of progress so that a professor is able to justify your funding. And your master's was like a research-based master's or a course-based master's? Yes. No, it was a research-based master. It was master's MS in computer science with thesis. Okay, sure, sure. And uh, once you got this offer and all, you had to do, go through this visa process and like flight booking and the accommodation. Which of this gave you some headache or there was no headache here at all? No, definitely there was a headache. I mean... <laughs> To tell you that um, the headache was when uh, 2020 was a COVID. So a lot of students had deferred their admission to 2021. And that's why getting a visa slot was also not an easy. And uh, like I said, I was working in India. So I did not know whether should I just put down my paper and just focus on uh, my uh, journey, master's journey ahead. And given the uncertainty with COVID back in 2021 in India, it was a second wave. It was difficult to like, you know, just uh, put your eggs in one basket. So I, my program was starting from, was starting from somewhere 15th or 16th of August. And my first lot of visa interview that I got was around 29th or 30th July, if I remember correctly. And my last day at the office was around 6th of August. So you can pretty much imagine how tightly packed it was or how much of the uncertainty was there in the planning because of uh, COVID, because of finding a slot, booking the ticket. So I remember that I had booked the ticket before because uh, uh, like finding the airline ticket was not even easy back then. And then I applied for a US visa uh, interview and there was a lot of bets that I took. And it, it was like, if it did not work out, it is fine. I'm still working. I spoke with my manager. I expressed my interest uh, to my manager about doing master's. And initially, we were also trying to see that if I can go for my master's through the company side, they can sponsor my education and I will be returning back to the SLB. But due to, I think, uh, HR rules, uh, it could not be formulated because they were looking for more senior years of experience. They were looking for having five or six years of experience where I just had three years of experience with the company. So my manager did try to uh, like, uh, like support me, but since it could not work out very well, so he like did advise me to take a uh, decision so that I'm not, uh, I'm not able to join my masters and I have designed. So he did support me in that journey, understood it. And uh, when, when my visa was approved, that's where I did put down my paper. And there is a notice period always associated with the work. And it was a three month notice period, but he was willing to like talk to human resources and get this wave. So he was really, really supportive in, uh, for my future master's program. So 6th August, I resigned, 8th, 9th or 10th August, 11th August, I traveled. And then 16th or 17th August, I'm starting my program. So it was very, very hectic and very uncertain, I would say. It felt like it has, it, there is a support and uh, help from a lot of people to make this happen. So everything did fall in place eventually, but with a lot of hiccups. Yeah. Yeah. And you had this three month notice period. So that was waived for you finally, or you had to pay some penalty for that? So no, my manager was able to get this wave for me and that's why I want to give him credit for that because uh, uh, like rules uh, were strict but since my uh, like since my motivation was to pursue higher education and Slumberji has always been somewhere supportive to their employees from one way or another. So uh, he was able to like talk this out and he was initially planning to like 
help me to go uh, to pursue my masters where company will support me but because of like uh, like rules hr rules which is strict i would say he could not uh, support me in that way so he did understand that and when i was parting my way he did what he could do best so he compensated in some other ways <laughs> no no my yeah yeah my like notice period was waived off yeah yeah and i think he probably yeah. was not giving you like too much crucial jobs also to do right because he was waiting for your visa as well <laughs> no there was a very critical project that was going on i would say and that i was the sole person handling that project so i should say that before uh, when i decided to do my masters i expressed my interest and i changed my role from geophysics to software engineer so like 6 7 months before my masters i was working as a software engineer professional so i was handling one software project that i only know that code base and uh, that project was completed uh, though but there was some uh, uh, some extension to that that the client was willing to uh, like want want them wanted that and uh, in the interim of that i expressed my interest so he was i would say he was a very nice person that he even though he knew that i'm a very I, i like i'm the only person who like know the code thoroughly and would be the best person to execute the job he supported me he asked me to give knowledge transfer to other teammate i did uh, my part very well and then he kind of uh, like understood my situation and then he did advise me that okay if you think this is in your this is in your best interest you can go ahead and uh, i was trying to complete my part as much as possible from my side because uh, if somebody is putting trust on you you should also like deliver the work as much as possible so the work was also hectic back then but at the same time uh, like given the uncertainties of the situations you have to i think stretch outside your comfort zone sure sure and uh, the accommodation how did you book your accommodation like did you book it beforehand or after you came to virginia tech no i did uh, book beforehand these were the bets that i had taken before even like finalizing my visa because uh, i could not uh, like choose to like do everything in the last moment so financially i booked my ticket and booked a accommodation by searching it online and finalizing a place depositing the security funds and stuff but since i was working that those decisions were relatively easier for me you could say because uh at the very worst it's like a loss of money but it is in the safe bet and the money transfer and all uh, use like wire transfer or some app to transfer for the landlord accommodation thing so i we did, i had a like i was like i find i had a flatmate so my flatmate had a uh, some relatives here so his relatives kind of paid it to the owner and then after coming and i think i paid it uh, i paid him in india yeah that's that's oh, how sure. it worked okay so you managed uh, through your relatives which airline did you take to come to virginia tech uh, qatar qatar, qatar yeah, it was qatar what was qatar. the trajectory like uh, flight trajectory i think it was from delhi to doha and from doha to D- washington dc okay and then uh, from there you took like so washington dc and then uh, virginia tech i was admitted to blacksburg campus which is like 4 uh, hours of drive from there so from the airport you have shuttle and buses so i took a uh, shuttle to go to campus were you traveling with someone else or it was a solo trip it was a solo trip but you came to us before uh, colorado school of mines and also there was not much of a confidence issue and you knew a lot of things already yeah 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 i knew a lot of things because i have traveled to us and other countries as Well, so i had like experience of traveling like europe us alone so that was not something to worry for me only the timing was i think how how do you plan things and the deadlines were quite strict so i was just trying to meet that deadlines so you were at uh, csm colorado school of mines uh, for this uh, summer internship research internship and then you came to virginia tech did you see yeah. any differences visible differences shocking difference cultural difference how was how, how do they compare csm versus vt so i would say that um, 
I was in different different department at Colorado School of Mines. I was interning in petroleum engineering department, but in computer science, uh, Virginia Tech, I was in computer science department. So also I was interning during the summer when there's like less students. So I was working with PhD students who were primarily driving the problem statement and helping me achieve my milestones. And uh, at Virginia Tech during my research, I was working uh, more or less independent even though there was PhD student but we were collaborating we were not he was not like a driving uh, project so at, at during my internship I was working as a, a junior researcher you could say so I was learning from a PhD student and his experience so but during my master thesis I had to define a problem I had to propose a problem I had to like in, work towards the solution uh, to that for that problem and others will probably collaborate give you ideas maybe uh, have one or two bra brainstorming session but it's you who would be in charge for your project or for your thesis so i think that is a big difference but again i feel that difference is because uh, i was at colorado school of mines i was interning as an undergrad during the summer so and at Virginia Tech, I, ha I was basically working toward my thesis. This is something that I will have my ownership. So I think the difference is because of that factor. Other than that, I think uh, uh, CSM and VT both are in College Town. So my experience in living in College Town has been very well. I think College Town gives you a lot of good memories because it's a small town. It's beautiful. It's very peaceful. These are the places. I like peaceful cities. So... Uh, as such, I don't know any big difference that may exist, but because there's a lot of things that could account for it, different department, different timings. But uh, yeah, I just like my experience at both places. And different mindset also. <laughs> yeah, different mindset too. That's right. Sure. sure. And uh, did you do any part-time job or internship during your master's apart from the RATA? Yes, yes, I did a uh, summer internship uh, at a startup in, for a software engineer called Kentech. So I, I was doing my summer internship in summer of 2022. So with this uh, CSM, Colorado School of Mines and uh, Virginia Tech, uh, the uh, I mean, first finding this RATA thing and then also figuring out this internship, you had to probably go through a lot of rejections. How was your rejection oh, yeah. learning curve? <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, rejection is also there. So I, to tell you honestly, when I came, when I started my program at Virginia Tech, uh, that's what I realized that competition is very intense in computer science. And um, uh, my sole purpose was that perhaps I'll come here, I'll take some time, I will learn and I will build my profile and then apply. But uh, I realized that you have to start looking for your internship from day one. There is no preparation time left. And this was a huge shock for me because uh, I didn't have a very solid background in computer science. I will not get interviews. So how do I basically look for the opportunity when I'm so much behind from other uh, students? And this is where, like I say, I would say that my master's journey has been very memorable for me because I found friends who were who were who has experience, prior experience, and they were helpful to me. They helped me like understand the concepts. They would sit with me in the library help me walk me through the concepts that were covered in the undergrad, let's say. So in my first semester, I didn't even uh, took the pressure of applying for an internship. So I did not apply, frankly, which may not be good strategy for others, but it was there for me because I have to understand that I don't have a solid background and I have to first uh, cover up for the lack of knowledge and uh, resume that is there. So I did not, bother about applying the internship and i thought that even if i don't get an internship that's fine because i will be working toward my research your thesis and that is also learning so my primary goal was that if you're able to get good projects if you're able to develop a good foundation at some point of time you will get some interview and when you get that interview make sure you pass it make sure you crack that uh, otherwise i think it would be a very uh, stressful to apply for uh, jobs, apply for interviews, and you don't have a strong foundation, you will be facing a lot more rejection and you will be feeling uh, more bad about yourself and maybe criticizing your decisions. 
so in, i took some time for preparing myself in my second semester i started applying for the internship because by the first semester i had developed some courses some projects some concepts so i knew that now now is the time i can start like putting my uh time to find an internship and then uh, when i started applying uh, that's where i i started to see that even though like i start i i, I think now i have something but it is not enough so rejection was there but i always uh, tried motivating myself that my primary goal is to first uh, uh, develop a foundation because even without foundation if i happen to like jo join somewhere as a software engineer or machine learning engineer or data scientist i would not be able to complete my work so i wanted to like uh, and uh, i always thought that if i'm not able to find an internship i will have a research uh, to do and my professor is supporting me to do my research so that's there is something that i can do during my summer fortunately i was able to land an internship i was able to uh, like with all the hard work i think your persistence and working hard towards some goal and uh, basically planning or strategizing your uh, steps small steps uh, correctly you would be able to like meet the uh, dreams so my goal was that if i may uh, that i have to when i graduate from my thesis program i have to find a job that's that is more important for me if i'm not able to land an in internship that is fine but when i gra graduate from my program that is where i want to have an opportunity ha in the hand and for that i might have to work extra hours because others have already worked before in india or have a four years of ba uh, bachelor back uh, curriculum in computer science so if you are basically willing to change field then you should be uh, perhaps willing to work extra hours or little hard to compensate for the difference so my timeline was that when i graduate i should have a op offer letter in my hand so there was a lot of rejection of course but uh, i was trying to like uh, take it one step at a time and uh, ex accept the fact that rejection is part of application and those who have all, those who have solid work experience if they are being rejected then i think uh, it is more probable that i would also get rejection but uh, that doesn't mean that it should deter me from applying i will be applying i will be working toward my interview skills toward in interview preparation and if it works out it works out sure sure and i see that now you are again uh, joining slv uh, shambhar ji so after you graduated or just before you graduated you were looking for this part time mm -hmm. jobs and all and you got in touch with probably some of your old colleagues managers etc so how was that uh, full time job hunting journey for you so i was um, after graduating from virginia tech i was i found a job at a different company in washington dc it was a equester and i was working as a ml engineer there and then uh, i was not looking for any job change or something specifically and uh, it was a matter of chance that uh, a recruiter from shlambaje just reached out to me related to a position i think i might have perhaps uh, maybe express interest uh, somewhere in job uh, search portal but nothing as such very definite then a recruiter reached out reached out to me regard, regarding the profile and uh, surprisingly they didn't know that i worked at slb before so that was a huge surprise i thought that i have a work experience with slb before that's why they are reaching out to me so i was in touch with my uh, manager previous manager in india so i didn't know what this uh, organization is where i'm going to interview so i checked with my manager uh, that uh, do you know about this org how is this org i am interested in working in this machine learning field does this org align with that and he told me yeah this org is quite good and you should definitely consider uh, like uh, working coming back to slb if you are uh, interviewing there and this org is quite good i can say that so he said me he he gave me that yeah this org basically aligns with my interest and then it uh, basically i started preparing for the interview and i had to go through the same interview process which other candidate would do and uh, here where i'm working i do not uh, like specifically i don't uh, we don't have same set of people that was there but yeah i did finally at least uh, have a online uh, connection with the old folks and it was nice uh, talking to them i think that did work as an edge for you also that you already have a bit of a slb experience and then they were looking for this new role for you and 
uh, that added to your uh, cv a bit <laughs> yeah you could say that because once you have worked in some company they know about your performance they know about your uh, work they know about your perhaps let's say your how like they can actually put more confidence in you given that you have passed the technical uh, portion of the interview so if there are two candidates one has worked at a company before and they are both equally qualified up given from their technical portion of the job then i think one who has worked before might have slight edge because people know sure sure that that's good to know and uh, yeah great to see uh, you know you settling down in the stuff market and all like you know we hear a lot of stories here and there uh, so it's always sure. good to see and listen to somebody you know who has actually cracked the code to uh, find the full time job and maybe in your case change job also <laughs> so i yeah, i true, hope true. Uh, we hope uh, our audience would have learned something from you and so after this uh, podcast we'll be uploading it to youtube as well as linkedin so some of them might reach you, you know, regarding your job hunting journey or internship hunting journey etc feel free to accept or reject them uh, whenever you have time sure 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 thank you very much vishal it was nice talking to you and i hope my experience might help some of the student or folks aspiring to do come here and uh, yeah thank you for your time yeah okay have a good day bye sure bye